Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts. Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can already see on the screen. If you are going to do a bit of business, then please keep it in the Millwall family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below or on our website, www.lionstv.co.uk. The cameras are rolling in Lions TV Towers, and I'm sure you know why. Today, the news has broken. Richard Cowley on Twitter London News Online that Millwall have had a record bid, a club record transfer bid rejected for Jason Malumbi from Brighton. The 21-year-old Irish international is apparently not for sale, even though he can't break into Graham Potter's premiership side. He's been in and around the bench and playing some Carling Cup matches or whatever they're calling the Carling Cup these days. But um, he, can't get, he can't get in the starting 11, uh, but Brighton realise his potential and they don't want to sell... Uh, people are asking me lots of questions today. Lots of questions. Uh, what position do I think Malumbi is? How much do I think the transfer bid was for? Do we need Jason Malumbi? So judging by the sheer amount of engagement the posts got today on social media, when I retweeted Richard Cowley's tweet and then put it out on Instagram and on Facebook, etc., etc., please follow us, by the way, on Instagram. If you haven't already, we're on our way to 10,000 followers. and I'd absolutely love to get there sooner rather than later. So questions I was getting asked. How much do I think the transfer fee was? Do we need Jason Malumbi? Uh, what type of midfielder is Jason Malumbi? It was, was a good question that was put to me by one of my mates. Shout out to Ryan Duble earlier. I saw on the train yesterday as well. Um, yeah, I I, it's a good question, that one. And there's a lot of questions to answer and talk about. So I thought, why not compact it in a video? Now we're back officially in lockdown number three, I think it is. And we're trying to help pass the time, lines, lounges, and lots of talk about Millwall trying to tide us over until Boris decides to let us go out and play once again on the streets. So let's start out. How much do I think the transfer bid was for? Well, we know it was definitely a club record fee if it had been accepted. Apparently, he's not for sale. I don't know if we'll go back in again. Um, obviously, previous to this, Tom Bradshaw, 1.5. And then the following week, or the same week, Ryan Leonard, 1.6. was our all-time record transfer. So I would imagine... Mill may have gone in with a little bit of a cheeky bid. Uh, I'd say somewhere in the region of 2.5 million, I guess. I don't know anything. So that's just purely me basing that on I, me thinking I know what I'm talking about. I would say around 2.5 million. Maybe pushing it to three if we went in for a second bid. But I don't think they're going to let him go for anything less than four or five. So would we go to that? And would it be worth going to that is another very, very good question. Now, if you remember back... For those who already put in the comments and shouting at the screen, you said you didn't want Malumbi back. I haven't yet said I do want him back. But previous to this, and it's a question that just doesn't seem to go away with Jason Malumbi. Um, do, do we want him? Don't we want him? Is he coming back to the club? Isn't he coming back to the club? And I'll be honest, I actually got bored of all the talk of it when people saying, bring him home, bring Jason Malumbi home. Well, Jason Malumbi is, 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 uh, is from the Republic of Ireland and he came through the ranks of uh, uh, um, Brighton. So by people saying that, I, I appreciate that they really... You know, I've got a connection with Malumbi as a player. He is everything a Millwall player should be. Uh, he's kicked ball, I can bite. He puts tackles in. And I put a picture up on social media earlier. I'll put it on the screen now. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's what we definitely need a little bit more of at the minute. So, um, bring him home. Well, I'm not sure. But let's, let's bring him to Millwall and make him one of our own. Do we want to do that? As I said in previous videos, at previous times, I said I didn't want to do that. I said I'd be interested in buying him 1 million percent. But to bring another player back on loan... Uh, a time when we had other players in that position that could do as good a job, if not slightly better, maybe, I'm not so sure. So, first and foremost, no, I didn't want him back. However, as you go along, as I very often say, progression, things change. Uh, at the time we got offered, I think, Jason Malumbi back, or, or we, we was talking about getting him back, we was six in the table. We had Sean Williams fit, you know, we had Billy Mitchell fit, we had Ryan Woods, Ryan Leonard, Fit Ben Thompson there as well. So I didn't feel at the time that we needed one, another lone player, and two, another, I'm going to say, holding midfield player. Now, Jason Malumbi definitely isn't a 10. He definitely isn't an attacking midfield player, okay? However, I don't feel that he is fully you know, there to protect the back four. I feel he's got more to his game than that. Would I call him a box to box midfielder? I don't think he scores enough goals. Um, and has enough involvement in things going forward, if I'm honest, 
to say he'd be a fully box-to-box -box midfielder. So I would say he is a ball winner. I'd say he's a ball winner to break play up and distribute the ball to other players that can do more with it. Uh, that may be harsh on him, I don't know. I'm thinking back to his last spell at the club. And listen, he's clearly talented. And he's, I said, he's everything a middle player epitomises. He just will get stuck in. And like I said, going back to the game, unfortunately, again, uh, still having nightmares about it, against Coventry on Saturday. Jason Malumbi wouldn't have fucking had what was going on the pitch. There's absolutely no way. However, Ben Thompson wouldn't have had what was going on the pitch. They would have gone, fuck that, bang, crunch, and start putting a few tackles in, letting a few people know that you're there and you can't keep taking a piss out of us and fucking doing Cruyff turns and Olays on our pitch. Anyway, that's another game which I'm trying to leave in the past, so that's very difficult. And as I said, I'm still having cold sweats and nightmares about that one. So, Jason Malumbi, I would most liken him to a Ben Thompson type player. That's that's why out of everyone we've got in our in our team midfielders, I would most liken him to Ben Thompson. And people are going, oh, Ben Thompson's shit. Some of you are, I know you are. Ben Thompson's not shit by the way. Ben Thompson is a very capable player at this level and he has proven that. So I'm I'm still unsure why people keep saying Ben Thompson isn't up to this standard when he came back from Pompey proved he was. And you know single handedly played a big part in keeping us in this division. So Malumbi's going to be a better player than Thompson if he isn't already, okay? But what I'm saying is for the midfielders we got, I'm liking him most to Ben Thompson. But let's have a look from where we was at the time, like I said, the players we had to where we are now, okay? I strongly believe, and I know he will, Billy Mitchell's going to have a big future at this club, okay? A lot of you haven't seen enough of him, but what you've seen, there's a lot more to come on top of that. But Billy, at the minute, is coming back from his second hamstring injury. I believe he's back in training now, so it won't be long. Um, a lot of people say on Twitter, like him and Malumbi. Now that's a, for me, that excites me. That's that's full of excitement, that's full of commitment, that's full of mealwallness. Billy's more of a ball player than Malumbi, but I think they'll complement each other well. And it's just energy, young, exciting, determined, hungry young players. That's what we need. That's what we massively need an injection of all over the pitch, in my opinion. Um, we've got a few players in our squad, and they're coming to the end. Pierce, Smith, Williams, you know, all be good servants to the club, but it's getting a little bit, you know, the old, the old, the old guard on their way out now. We need some fresh, young, Millwall blood. Some players that are, you know, prepared to fucking die for the show in, in in fear of being over dramatic. But so you got Billy there, but as I say, Billy's still coming back from injury, and as I said, he will go on to prove what I know he can do. But at the minute, he hasn't done that because of his injuries, unfortunately. So you got to count him out the equation just for now. You know, I know for definite now that this has happened twice to him. Rowett won't rush him back. So. You've got Billy Mitchell, as I said, a little bit out of the picture at the minute. Sean Williams, who I love, always have, in the coaching, in the coaching scene now and in the coaching spotlight. So he's going he's gonna to be stepping away from playing so much. Ben Thompson, uh, along with Matt Smith as well, which I can't work out what's happening now, he's not rated by Gary Rowett. Let's have it right. Let's call, you know, let's, let's call the shots as they are. He is not rated by Gary Rowett, and he is not, as long as Gary Rowett is manager, going to feature heavily in a Mill shirt. So that's him out of the equation. That leaves Ryan Woods and Ryan Leonard. Remarkably, when I wrote all these names down earlier, Ryan Leonard was the one I went, yeah, all right. And I, I didn't know what to write next to his name because he is committed. I've not been a massive fan of him in the past. He has improved under Rowett. He does try and get forward and join in further up the pitch. And he can score a banger from range, which is always a good thing. So I, I put next to Ryan Leonard when I wrote down my notes, squad, a squad player. Now, what is a squad player these days? Because it isn't like it used to be. As I said, I don't make him like I used to. I sound like such an old man when I say that, but... Football isn't what it used to be. And you don't have 11 players and three subs anymore. They all get alternated. So a squad player is really a first-team player. And I can cope with Leonard in the team. And if I had to pick a starting 11 tomorrow... Um, uh, sorry, a starting two midfield... That'd be a tough one. I'll give myself a question there that I hadn't prepared for. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely go with Ben Thompson for, for, for a bit of tenaciousness and a bit of meal wallness and a bit of kick bollock and bite, flying tackles in... And I'll probably honestly go with Williams next to him with Leonard in a 10, maybe. I don't know, until, until Billy Mitchell's fit. But um, the other player in this scenario is, of course, Ryan Woods. I don't rate Ryan Woods. I don't rate him as a Millwall player. Technically, he's, he's got a lovely passing range, but he waddles around the pitch in the back three. I've gone over it a million times. And I don't want to be seen to keep going on about it, but you know my feelings on Ryan Woods. So let's leave Ryan Woods out of the equation. Ryan Woods is, is on a hell of an amount of wages, allegedly. Again, allegedly. Um, I don't want to be held accountable or sued by Ryan Woods and his big Bentley for anything. So uh, I ain't got anything to take anyway, Ryan. So sorry about that one, mate. But um, yeah, he's on a lot of wages apparently. You know, big money. He goes from he goes from Brentford to Stoke 
for 6.5 million pounds. Doesn't take a lot to work out. The problem we've got is, is that Gary Rowett, people are saying, what, what's Woods got on Rowett? Well, what Woods has got on Rowett is, Rowett's brought him to the club, and the same with Mason Bennett, he believes in these players, but I think now, well, I don't know, because he started in the last fucking game, didn't he? It seems to me that he doesn't, he needs to understand that although Ryan Woods technically is a good player, he's not a Millwall type player. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to keep going about Woods, but that's his, this is where we are. So, since the last time I said I didn't want Malumbi back, we've now had Billy Mitchell injured twice. He's been out for quite a while now, but actually could be five, six months in time. We're actually sure about the duration. Williams, love him as a squad player, love him at the club. Leonard can cope with him at the club. Ben Thompson's not going to get a look in. So, at the minute, you can take Billy out of the equation, you can take Ben Thompson out of the equation for the, for the immediate future. I'm not, I'm not talking like two, three months down the line. And Woods doesn't cut the mustard. So for me now, would I want Jason Malumbi back at the club? Fucking absolutely would. Just sheer, you know, a fresh fresh bit of blood. Knows and understands the club. I see today online somewhere that Preston are in for him now back on loan. Uh, now back on loan. He never went to Preston. He was at Mere Wall. But Preston have now joined the hunt and realised Jason Malumbi's potential. So would I want him if we could buy him 1 million percent? 1 million percent and I'd fuck Woods off at the end of the season uh, and Williams may or may not hang his boots up where he can sit in the wings and you know, I mean, help Malumbi, obviously both Irishmen Williams can help him understand even further than he already does about the club You know, in Williams overseeing the progression and the development of, of Billy Mitchell and Jason Malumbi, that very much excites me and going forward, that too as a, as a midfield excites me, as I said, Ben Thompson's not going to be around it, so I feel if we got Malumbi in, he may then let Thompson go back out on loan to Pompey, which nearly happened in the last transfer window. So, would I want Jason Malumbi? Absolutely. What do I think the transfer fee would be? Probably around, if we wanted to buy him, which I don't think they would, four to five million. I, I predict we bid around 2.5, 3 million at a push. But, um, I don't know, do we go back in and try and buy him? I, would I want him back on loan? Do you know what, for now, to try and stop the rot and change something, I would. Although, in, in the past, I didn't want that. As I said, things happen, things change now, positions change now as a team, and I just think we're in free for one to row it. I've been saying it for a long, long time, and the only way we can really stop that is to bring back tenacious, young, hungry players into the fold. Danny McNamara's now back at the club, and I'd love to see him start on Saturday against Boreham Wood, who are a team of won four games in a row, by the way. So don't take Saturday's game as a given, but that's another video for another day. So, yeah, Jason Malumbi, I'd say he's a, he's a ball-winning... I'd say he's... You know, a ball-winning, box-to-box midfielder. He doesn't get involved further up the pitch enough as I would like, and that brings me on to my next point, because a lot of you say, well, he's good, but we don't need him. We need a striker. I don't think, in fear of upsetting people, we're going we're gonna to get any strikers in, in January. And again, I might be wrong. Troy Parrott come on the other day. I said he doesn't look ready for the standard of football. And he's a little bit erratic and a little bit all over the place, but he definitely offers something more than... A Bud Varson would, in my opinion. Matt Smith, as I said, I don't know what's happening. He's completely out of the picture. The one for me that can help Gary Rowett turn it around very much is Kenzo Hall. Uh, I think we'll try and extend his loan. Uh, I'm, again, I don't know anything. I'm predicting that. Rowett said he wants three players in in that window. I'm assuming he's going to extend Zoe Hall's loan. We've also got Matt Smith there, of course. Anton Bradshaw has scored two goals in the last three games. So... Sorry to upset you all if you think we're going to be going out buying a striker. I don't think we will. And again, listen, I could be wrong. I'm just, that is a prediction for me. That is a full cast. Looking at what we've got strikers-wise, the 10 is the problem. It's the link between the midfield and the strikers. Um, as I said, we've got Matt Smith, Ken Zohor, Troy Parrott, John Daly Mavarsson, and Tom Bradshaw have all featured. I don't know if they've all featured recently. I've had Matt Smith really, strangely. Um... Because obviously we don't, you know, we're struggling, so the gaffer's trying different things. Those players as a whole, say Matt Smith take out the equations, he's hardly played. And Troy Parrott, maybe other than the last game, you know, they've all done quite well. They've all done quite well. Troy Parrott did all right in the last game, is what I'm saying. Previous to that, you know, he's coming back from injury still. So I don't think we're going to go out and get a striker. And again, you can get whatever striker you fucking like in the world. You can go and get Vardy, you can go and get Messi, you can go and get Ronaldo. You can stick them up front for us, but if they don't get the supply, and midfielders aren't pressing and joining in and breaking lines and getting beyond players, knocking the ball and moving beyond and running at back fours, it doesn't matter who you play it from because they're not going to get any chances. So Jason Malumbi, people saying he's not what we need, he is a little bit because, OK, further up the pitch, maybe not so much. Remember back to, he scored, well, he scored one goal in his time, didn't he, Mill? He actually scored two. A uh, lovely strike when he did join in. Mason Bennett cuts it back. The last game we actually, I actually went to, I think. Uh, not in the forest away, 3-0 massive hat trick back in fucking March, 
2020 was that? Nearly a year ago. Um, well, that goal was obviously credited to Matt Smith and he did score one that was credited to him, although it did take deflection in the last game of last season when we lost 4-3, was it? Queen's Park Rangers? Four, yeah, it was 4-3 in the end, yeah. So, he needs to get involved a little bit further up the pitch. What he can't come and do is, is sit and sit next to Woods, who is more than likely, I don't want to keep fucking saying it, is going to keep playing. Sure. After the show the other day, surely fucking not. But it does seem no matter what he does, um, he, could, he could run up and go around and chin him on the touchline and go around with still starting. I don't know. But if Malumbi comes in for now, right, I'd get Danny Mack in at right back soon as. I'd get um, Malumbi back, centre midfield, get Billy Mitchell fit. Already I'm thinking there's three young, hungry, uh, two of them homegrown talents that, that want to play for the club and are desperate, desperate to play for the club. Uh, I know Billy is, I know Danny Mack is. So I don't know Jason Malumi, but I'm sure, just judging by his all-round tenaciousness and passion, which is written all over his face when he plays, that that you know he wants to be a big part of it. Mirror, would he want to come to us if the transfer was accepted? I haven't covered that. I think he would. I think he would. And sometimes you've got to take. I don't I need to say a step forward, to take a step back. Let's be honest. They're in the Premier League. And we're not. So I suppose you know. From a, from a neutral point of view, you'd see it as, as a step down. But to come to Millwall and, and come back to a club you already know the fit is perfect and it works, I think it would be definitely would be a, a very good career move for Jason Malumbi. So, yeah, there you go. That's all my thoughts on Jason Malumbi. To recap, how much do I think we've bid? Two and a half million. Probably two and a half million. How much do I think we'd have to pay to get him? I think you're looking around four and up. Uh, what, what position do I think he... What bracket do I think Malumbi falls in? I'd say he's a tough tackling, ball winning, um, box to box midfielder that could do a little bit more to his game going forward. Uh, would I want him back as a permanent? Yes. As a loan for now, fuck me. Yes, I'll take him because we are, this have it right, desperate at a minute to turn things around and get back on the right track. And who would I most like to see him suited with? Billy Mitchell, if I can get fit, 100%. 100%. And then in the 10, I'd have Mason Bennett if he can stay fit. I know Jed, I've said that before. I know Conor Mahoney, if fuck knows where he is, but if he wants to come back and start playing again. But yeah, listen, Jason Malumbi, back to Millwall. Yes, fucking please. I was supposed to be doing the video again today with Benjamin Bloom, but I haven't done that. Myself and Benjamin Bloom will be live, in fear of getting it wrong again, having to cancel it, tomorrow night. We was going to do it last night, but Boris made his announcement at 8 o'clock. So we thought, you know, the traffic might get distracted to a wonderful Prime Minister's speech. Then tonight, obviously, uh, Ben's busy covering the, the Brentford game. If you haven't checked out his channel already, by the way, you're thinking who's Benjamin Bloom. He's very well known amongst our fan base. Go and check his channel out. He covers the entire championship. He knows everything. I, I, I can't... I'm actually sometimes bowled over by his knowledge of all the clubs. So he's live streaming tonight, I think, covering the Brentford game, if that's on. So tomorrow, we will be um, streaming from 8 o'clock. I'm going to do it as I do the live stream, so then you can, you know, you can then... Ask Ben questions. We'll talk to him in the mid-season review. We did a pre-season review, which went down very well. So we're going to do a mid-season review. Where's it going wrong? I'll get his opinions on Malumbi. We'll get all sorts going. And then Thursday, of course, we are... It is Thursday at that point, yeah. We're back in the game for a pre-match prediction for FA Cup on Saturday against Boreham Wood. Lions Lounge. Struggling a little bit for guesses. if I'm honest. Lions Lounge at the minute. I've got some good ones lined up. Two for the summer. Two very good ones for the summer. And one for the end of the month. So I'm going to sit down tonight and I'm going to go back over every single season, look at every single player from every season. I'm going to make a list and I'm going to make a hit list. And I'm going to go out and I'll get us a few lines down just to get us through this lockdown. Thanks for tuning in to this video and I will see you in the next one, which will be tomorrow live, 8 o'clock, live streaming on YouTube with Benjamin Bloom to get his thoughts on what is going wrong under Sir Gary of Rowett. See you tomorrow. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you lines.